Students at an elementary school in Stanton are finding ways to remember a family resource director who passed away over spring break. A Clay County man charged with killing five people in a December crash appeared in court for the first time since he was indicted. What the daughter of one of the victims had to say. Investigators identify a young man who was killed in a weekend crash in Lexington. This is WKYT News at 430. Good afternoon, Sam Dick and Amber Philpot reporting. Students and staff at a Kentucky elementary school are remembering an educator who died over spring break. Joyce Hall died last Tuesday, days after developing flu like symptoms. Hall worked at Stanton Elementary in Powell County. WKYT's Kristen Kennedy shows us how the school is coping with the unexpected loss. It's our top story at 4 30. Messages like this one are just one of many that you'll find right now throughout Stanton Elementary. Students have spent the day writing messages of love and support for the Family Resource Center director they lost last week. Family tell us Joyce Hall died Tuesday from complications from the flu. This morning, her co workers and students at Stanton Elementary gathered before class to remember her. And they had an opportunity to just talk about Miss Joyce, and we had some tears. I had some tears, and some of my students did. A therapy dog visited Jenny Thorpe's class Monday morning. District leaders provided all classes at the school the opportunity for the visit. We have a, a grief dog here today. Her name is Lisa, and the kids are able to pet on her, and it helps them to feel better. The school will release balloons for Hall Friday. Her family plans on attending. In Stanton, Kristen Kennedy, WKYT. Hall was buried Saturday in Stanton. A Clay County man faces a judge after being charged in a December crash on the Hal Rogers Parkway that killed five people. 41 year old Jason Gibson was arraigned today in circuit court. Angela Reingard was the only reporter there as family and friends of the victims watched Gibson enter a plea. For the family members of the victims in this case, today was tough. For many, it was the first time they saw Jason Gibson since he was indicted. In December, police say 41 year old Jason Gibson was drunk when he crashed his truck, killing five people, including an unborn child. Family and friends of the victim sat in the courtroom for Gibson's arraignment, some wearing shirts calling for justice. Nothing's going to make anything any better. I mean, nothing's going to bring them back. Nothing's going to make us feel any better. However, if he gets life in prison without the possibility of parole, I can live with that. Gibson spent only minutes in court where he entered a not guilty plea. For family members of the victims, it was hard to hear. Still, they vow to be at every court appearance. Every time. Every time he's here, we will be here. He may not know our names, but he will know our faces. Gibson faces four counts of murder and fetal homicide, among other charges. Family members of the victims say they hope to schedule a walk or ceremony in the future in order to honor their loved ones. In Clay County, Angela Riger, WKYT. And Gibson is scheduled to be back in court on June 6th. Investigators have identified the young man who was killed in a Lexington crash. The coroner says 22 year old Robert Rucker of Nicholasville was in the passenger seat of a car that crashed on Athens Boonesboro Road yesterday. He was ejected and died at the scene. And the coroner says speed was a factor in that crash. The driver was also injured and was taken to UK hospital. No word if he is facing any charges. Chilly start to the work week here in the bluegrass, and it's only going to get cooler as we head into the overnight hours with a freeze warning in effect. Let's check in now with meteorologist Jim Caldwell. Hi, Jim. And hello to you. And we are going one way, guys, and that's straight down tonight, temperature wise, as we likely end up in the mid and upper 20s with the freeze potential in place. We're already tracking a little hint of some cooler air. In position in northern Kentucky. Well, there are sky cams here as we're looking across Kentucky. You can see Covington already down to 52. Now, you compare that to everybody else Jackson, Lexington, and London. We're doing well. 60s and even 70s right now in London. 73 to be exact. Very pleasant out there for us. Now, as we look at the picture here with our Defender Radar Network, you're going to find some showers have passed through the area. 
that's a frontal boundary that's driving through and allowing for the cooler air to inch closer and closer to us. That's why it's already showing up there across uh, parts of northern Kentucky and White Covington's down into the 50s already at this hour. We'll watch those temperatures continue to drop overnight with that freeze warning in place. Everybody in blue included in on that. Watch our temperatures go from 5 o'clock today all the way into the 8 o'clock hour, already in the 40s, and then overnight and early tomorrow morning, there you see the appearance of the 20s right here across central and parts of eastern Kentucky. Quite the cold stuff. And the problem is, Sam, this isn't going to be the last time we see it. We've got a couple more chances, a couple more warm-ups as well, and even some flakes in this seven-day forecast. We'll track it all coming up. Thank you, Jim. Lexington police will soon join some other Kentucky police departments in using body cameras. The department launched its pilot program at the end of 2014. Last year, Mayor Jim Gray included $600,000 in his budget to fund the cameras, but the department didn't start using them right away. Lieutenant Eric Lowe says that the, it took time to test the different cameras to develop and tweak their policy. They also visited some other departments in hopes of learning from their mistakes. One of the reasons we've uh, taken the time that we have with making this decision is that we understand that the importance and the, the, the scale of uh, what we're in, in, entering into with body cameras, we, we are going to be uh, recording and storing initially tens of thousands of videos, could be hundreds of thousands of videos as time goes on. We've got to make sure that we pick the right vendor from the beginning. Amber's at the live desk now with our investigative reporter, Delano Massey, with more on how this story is coming up and what he's working on for tonight at 6. Amber? Sam, thank you. Last year, we just heard Lexington's mayor included $600,000 in his budget for the cameras. So the question is, why is it taking so long to get them active? You know, this is actually something that we have been looking at for a while, um, been trying to keep track of it. And they sent out a request for proposals for contracts so that they could find vendors. And that's kind of where they are in the process. But the main thing is they've tested different types of cameras. They've develop, developed a policy. And they've also gotten a lot of feedback about that policy. And they've also visited uh, plenty of other agencies to try to figure out what things they could do right and, and what adjustments they could make along the way. This is new to a lot of different departments. I'm sure there are a lot of challenges that are going to stand in the way, right? There, the biggest challenge that most departments have noticed is storage. Mm -hmm. um, there are departments that start out and they have a server locally, and so they're storing all of this video, and then they realize that they, they've gone from gigabytes to terabytes, and so it's just huge. In Lexington, what they've realized is they don't want to deal with it here in-house. <laughs> they want cloud storage, and they want someone who's going to give them the cameras, but then also be responsible for managing that data, and also to have somewhere secure so that people do know that officers aren't tampering with the, the uh, evidence. It's a big undertaking. When could folks here in Lexington see these cameras out and about with the officers? I think it's probably going to be toward the end of the year. Um, at least that's what the goal is. I think they're st they'll start rolling it out in the summer. Um, one of the biggest challenges is, well, first the council has to approve this, so that's the first step. Once they pick the, the vendor, then the council will approve it. And then, two, they have to implement it into their training program. Um, they want it to be muscle memory. They want the officers to get out of their cruisers and then also um, just know, I'm going to turn on my radio and then I'm going to turn on the body camera. It has to be muscle memory. So that's one of the things that they're going to work on in the future. All right, we'll see that story coming up tonight at 6 a.m. Amber, thank you. Firefighters say a seatbelt likely saved a woman during a crash today. Police say the woman lost control of her SUV, overcorrected, and the SUV flipped on Mason Healy. Firefighters had to remove the roof of the SUV to get her out. The woman went to the hospital with minor injuries. Safety features in vehicles now are, are so much improved, and uh, wearing your seatbelt makes a difference. The driver was the only person in the SUV at the time of the accident. Kentucky's attorney general says Governor Bevin has until Friday to restore cuts to higher education or face a lawsuit. Last week, through executive order, he, he, he slashed funding to higher education by 4.5%. But Attorney General Andy Bashir says Governor Bevin's move was illegal since the state is not facing a declared budget shortfall. Now, meanwhile, lawmakers in Frankfurt are still trying to work out a two year state budget. And there's just one legislative day left this session, and that is on April 12th. Hard to believe, but Keeneland season begins on Friday, and while you are at the racetrack, you'll be able to get some special maker's mark that you won't be able to get anywhere else. Very special. Our Deanne Stevens is out and about with the details on this unique partnership. Hi, Deanne. Good afternoon, guys. We are here at Keeneland preparing for the spring meet. Things opening up on Friday, and I 
was just admiring the beautiful bourbons that are offered here at Keeneland, one of which happens to be the brand new Private Select by Maker's Mark that you can only, we're just going to go ahead and tell you, you can only get it here at Keeneland. Fran Turner, I just took a lot of questions uh, off the board for you yes, because you that's did. what you're going to be getting this whole meet. How do you get it, right? How do you get it? You come to Keeneland and you experience it with us by the drink. And so, it's available at every location that has a bar. Fantastic. Yes. Uh, how did you guys end up with a private select Maker's Mark? Because Makers in Keeneland kicked things off how many years ago together? Oh my gosh, from the very get go. Um, we actually received the very first case of Maker's Mark was brought to wow. Keeneland. Yes, very strong relationship. Okay, and so now we're throwing some things together with your very own private select. And by the yes. way, it definitely has a distinctive taste and it is yummy delicious coming from a bourbon lover. Yes, it is. You guys are offering some special signature drinks this spring meet. What are we mixing up here? Okay, well, first and foremost, we want to talk about this private select. It is um, uncut straight from the barrel. It came out at 110.5 proof. So it's not for the faint at heart. Our bourbon aficionados will be loving it on the, draw, on the rocks or uh, are neat. But we wanted to create a signature cocktail for all those other bourbon lovers. Right, so let's get started. Okay, so what we're going to talk about here is we're going to just make it with our one and a half ounces of bourbon and we're adding this um, stirrings blood orange bitters it's really sweet okay. on the palate what we're is the name of this blood orange old fashioned so this is blood orange old fashioned bitters and just a touch very simple simple cocktail okay just a touch of simple a and sweet a good taste stir there. yes love the ice yes and then <laughs> top it off with that effervescence of as Orange. Kenny says, that's a drink on the rock. Yes, right? it is on the rock. Okay. And that is in our signature um, acrylic cup that will be available on Maker's Mile Day, dipped in the signature red wax. Ah, that is yummy and a beautiful yes. little cup. Now, what else do we have? You also have 46 and change. What's this one? Yes, the 46 and change. This is our, um, our featured cocktail on Maker's Mile Day, which is the second Friday of uh, the race meet the April, on April 15th. Um, this is a unique cocktail that we'll be serving all over the track. Uh, this beautiful glass that was um, created um, by our Maker's Mark um, crew. They wanted to go with a retro look. It, it features the, uh, the recipe, recipe for yeah. 46 and change and also for the Keeneland Breeze, breeze which is one of our uh, signature cocktails here at Keeneland as well. This one is made with pineapple and lemon juice, all fresh, uh, shaken, has a froth on the top, orange liqueur, and it's made with Maker's 46, of course. People will have the opportunity to check that out when the spring meet opens here this Friday at Keeneland and check out the Maker's Private Select exclusively for you and Keeneland. I'm Deanne Stevens, out and about. This is mine, right? Yes. This is mine. Yes. <laughs> Back to you guys. And with the cold weather we're going to have, mm -hmm. you may need something to warm you up, whether it's that hot chocolate will do it. or that. <laughs> so, all right, a steamy new series exposing the double life of a high end escort and the Academy of Country Music handing out its top awards. It was a big night for Kentucky native Chris Stapleton, who won four awards, including Male Vocalist of the Year. Suzanne Marquez has her eye on entertainment. Jason Aldean is Country Music's Entertainer of the Year. But I love this business, I love the people in it, and I love the fans that support it, and thank you very, very much. The Academy of Country Music handed out its awards in Las Vegas last night. In my coat of many colors. Performances included a duet starring Dolly Parton and Katy Perry. A dark prequel to the Snow White story opens later this month. The Huntsman Winter's War tells the story of the evil queen and her ice queen sister, played by Emily Blunt. Blunt says the character has good intentions, but as a real life mother, the actress won't be channeling her parenting style. No, she's horrible. No, I won't. It's too icy. Blunt is expecting her second child later this year. A new TV series follows the life of a high-end escort. The girlfriend experience is Steven Soderbergh's adaptation of his 2009 film. Do you mean all your clients online? It stars Elvis Presley's granddaughter, Riley Keough, as a law student with a double life. It makes you think about moral codes and like what's right and wrong, and, and everybody's just very personal, and she's very sure of hers. The Girlfriend Experience premieres on the Stars Network this Sunday. That's your Eye on Entertainment. Suzanne Marquez, CBS News, Los Angeles. Speaking for myself, I'm done with snow in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. So if, if the forecast has snow in it, I say thumbs down. Does it, Jim? Are you really going to tell us this? <laughs> 
You know, I should just wait and let Chris do it. Yeah. Uh, but unfortunately, yes, that is the case, guys, as we go working toward the end of the week and into the first part of the weekend. And remember, it's the first full week of April. That's why I just can't wrap my mind around. But it happens. We've seen worse in April through the years. It's 65, though, in Lexington right now. We're in one of our many peaks that we're going to go through over the next several days. But look at Covington. We've got to keep watching those northern skies and those northern temperatures because that's the source region of uh, our next air mass that's going to be diving through. So already in the 40s there. Overnight tonight, I think we end up in the upper 20s, low 30s as a freeze warning is in place for everybody mentioned here. And the peak and valley uh, description that we have here, roller coaster ride, whatever you want to say, our seven day really shows you. Wednesday, 64, Thursday, 48, then the cold kind of lingers. That's one of those big dips that will hold on into the first part of the weekend. So we've got a wild weather ride here coming in our seven day forecast. Let's see what we've got going on traffic wise out there. Here's Officer Don. Inbound Newtown Pike near I-75. That's where we're dealing with the tractor trailer that was uh, hauling 45,000 pounds of honey. It shifted. The trailer flipped. The right lane of inbound Newtown Pike is blocked. Just flew over. There's not much of a backup there. Looks like we're doing okay to get past it for now. Also, a new non entry at North Broadway and I-75. Drive times this afternoon. Uh, to Versailles, we're okay. To Nicholasville, 12 to 15 minutes. Not a big deal there. And right now to Frankfurt, everything's normal on 64. Now back to the studio. Officer Don, thank you. An artificial coral reef and a police pursuit of a pup. It's the video that will have you talking. Take a look at this. An underwater art exhibition debuted on the world's second largest artificial reef. The 500 foot General Hoyt Vandenberg is in the Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary, about seven miles south of Key West. Over the weekend, divers installed a dozen illustrations on the Vandenberg's weather deck, more than 90 feet below the surface of the Atlantic Ocean. A wily fugitive led police on a chase in San Francisco. The runaway was a chihuahua. Some drivers ratted him out and told police he was darting in and out of traffic. Police stopped traffic to go after the pooch on the San Francisco Oakland Bay Bridge, but the pup didn't make it easy. Look, the officers chase him. They eventually caught the little fella and turned him over to animal control. Now they are trying to track down his owner. He was not giving up. He was not. He'll be sleeping well for a <laughs> yeah. while after that run. Thank you for joining us at 4:30. Much more to come now at 5 o'clock.